There are many other famous philosophers from the ancient world, too many to cover here, but some notables and their ideas, very briefly, are as follows. Thales, born, let's say, 624 BCE, is recognized as the first person to reject mythology as a way of explaining things, preferring deductive reasoning, theories, and mathematics. He's credited with the first mathematical discoveries and the first to predict a solar eclipse. He hypothesized that all nature originated from one thing, water. Anaximander, born, let's say, 610 BCE and successor to Thales, rationalized that the origin of things must be unlimited, emerging from a primordial chaos taking form in the four elements water, air, fire, and earth. Water can only be wet and not dry, he reasoned, and could not be the origin of all things. He also believed there were many worlds and said fish were ancestors of humans, possibly the first mention of evolution in history. Xenophanes, born about 570 BCE, studied fossils of fish on land and concluded that water once covered the earth. However, he was also known to distinguish between true belief and knowledge, meaning it is okay to act as if we know the truth as long as we know we could be wrong, and evidence is the best way to prove an idea. His poems were critical of religious beliefs. He pointed out that an Ethiopian god looks like an Ethiopian, and a Thracian god looks like a Thracian. He wrote, but if cattle and horses and lions had hands, or could paint with their hands and create works such as men do, horses like horses and cattle like cattle also would depict the gods' shapes and make their bodies of such a sort as the form they themselves have. Now we get to Plato, possibly the most influential man in the Western world. Born in 427 BCE, he taught in a field outside the city walls of Athens known as the Academy, which is where the word originates. It's thought that all of his writings have survived, which includes the teachings of Socrates. In Plato's writings, Socrates states the soul is divided into three sections, reason found in the head, spirit in the chest, and appetite in the gut area. Plato believed God was perfect, not a ruler, but an artist, so stories about gods who behaved like men were false, but he justified teaching by using myths because it's more interesting. He described matter as having five states of being made up of geometric shapes. The dodecahedron of the universe, its twelve sides corresponded to the twelve astrological signs, plus the four elements, icosahedron of water, octahedron of air, tetrahedron of fire, and hexahedron or cube of earth. He states in the Timaeus, We must imagine all these to be so small that no single particle of any of the four kinds is seen by us on account of their smallness. But when many of them are collected together, their aggregates are seen. It was advanced thinking for someone who thought the earth was the center of the universe. He thought that after the creator had made all of the forms, he made an eternally moving image of them, and this is what we know of as time. And finally, Aristotle, born 384 BCE, a student of Plato and nearly his equal in terms of influence. He cataloged about 500 species of animals and noted they were highly suited to their functions. He followed the four element model and added ether as a divine substance of the heavens. He placed earth at the center, water rests on top of earth, air is above water, and fire is above air, and ether is, again, the heavens. The four elements are jumbled up, but trying to get back to their essential place. Air and fire want to go up, and earth and water fall down. The classic elemental model would not be replaced until modern chemistry was born in the 18th century. Athens would fall and was absorbed into the Roman Empire. Greek philosophy was mostly opposed by the various religious ideas that encountered it. All the while, most of the original Greek works would be lost. Almost 2,000 years later, widespread translations and literacy of what remained would ignite the Renaissance.